Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. Today's topic is flow for beginner concepts. So this video is great for anyone who has never built a flow and is really interested in uh, what, what flows are, what can they do for you and for your org, uh, when to use flows, what are the best practices um, and so on. Uh, this video we are not going to cover building a flow because I do have plenty of other videos and there is a playlist called flows 101 where I actually show you building flows and kind of explaining different concepts so please check them out if you are more interested and this is also a good video for anyone who has built few flows but still is trying to kind of understand the concepts around flows okay so let's get started why do we need to learn flows at this point because salesforce is putting a lot of time and i think effort in releasing new features every release uh, into the flows and since they are very diverse and there are different types you can almost meet uh, almost any requirements using flows doesn't mean you should but it's really diverse and i'm going to get into what are different flow types and what can you do for with with the flows and how can it help your your org and a quick note which is i want to call out that you might you want to have lightning enabled to take the full advantage of using flows if your org is in classic Flows are still awesome, but there might be some features you might not be able to use. So if you are in Lightning, it's amazing what flows can do. Okay, so let's talk about what are different flows. So I want to categorize the flows into two major category. And before I even do that, the way you get the flows is you actually go to your setup and type flow and you'll get to the flows. So you hit new flow and that will bring you to the screen. So two types of flows are screen flow and background flows. There are multiple types within here. So but for now let's focus on two main core types. One is screen and the other is non-screen or background flow. So what is screen flow means? It it means that any flows that your user can interact with, they can in, enter inputs to it and see something or does something with the flow. I'll give you an example which I think I have here of screen flow. So this is my home page and I built a flow and populated it here. So as you can see, I can enter my information here. It will add data. I can put address, city, whatever you want, all the fields you can put in this flow and maybe create a record in the background using this information. So one example would be maybe you have, you have a COVID testing uh, thing going on and you want to capture the patient data into your system and maybe create appointments for them so you can build a flow really quickly put them in the community side get the fields that you need for example name your health insurance number address and whatever and you can create patient data case record or appointment record inside salesforce so you can do all these things using just using a flow so that's the screen element of the flow. The other side of the flow is more around automation, which is what the background flows are. So if you are familiar with workflow rules or process, it's kind of the same thing or even trigger. So let's say you want to create um, on the creation of an account, you want to create uh, an opportunity associated with that account. Great example for a record trigger flow. Record triggered are more like you want to do something based on a record update create edit or delete etc so that's the record triggered flow and even within that record triggered flow there are multiple types of record triggered flows uh, i have a video on that specifically about that so definitely check that out um, and then there are different types of background flows right so you can have a scheduled background flow so for example you want to send emails to people at nine o'clock every day for every for every record that's in progress so maybe you have an approval process going on and you want to send email to people whose records are in approval process every day at 9 a.m. to remind them to do something with those records great example for a scheduled triggered flow you can also of course use reporting to do that but depending on your requirements you could you might want to use scheduled triggered flows um, then auto launched are also background flows but they are they function a little bit differently than record triggered flows because you have to launch the auto launched flow from something it could be a process 
could be apex code um so or a lightning component so auto launch flows are launched from something else they cannot be triggered on a record creation or deletion by itself record triggered flows on the other hand can be and as we already spoke about that platform trigger events are flows that will launch on the background again on the trigger of a platform event this this requires its own kind of a video which should be coming up soon okay so there are different types of flows and now as you can see it has wide variety of use cases so definitely highly recommend if you haven't started building flows yet learn and start building maybe you can start playing around in your or or to kind of test it out and learn um, one thing I do want to say is when you're beginning with the flow it might sound a little bit intimidating and uh, just to build your first flow I think is a big step and once you kind of get, build your first flow that will really get you excited and you want to build more and you will be flowing no pun intended so definitely try it uh, there is you might make mistakes which is completely fine um, which is why you have sandboxes so try it out in your sandbox build it out see how what what works and what doesn't and flows error emails ha actually have gotten a lot better so if you get an error it will tell you what the error is so definitely let me know if you have any questions or if you start building your flows okay so let's get back to <clears throat> when to use flows uh, we already talked about that so depending on your use case um, chances are you will be able to use a flow for those use cases and one thing I do want to talk about is best practices and this is specifically best practices around naming convention because um, a lot of beginners do this um, because when you're beginning with a new tool uh, a lot of times it's hard to keep track of what do you want to name them right so this is also best practices in programming in general so let's say I want to build a screen flow and I want to pull in a screen here and I need an address just giving an example so this is where I want to talk about the actual naming convention so what do you name here actually matters maybe at the time you're building the flows you might just type test or something like that but let's say you want to use this value somewhere later down the line then test will not make any sense you want to call it maybe patient address if that's what you're going for if this is patient address this is very important it's very small thing to do but it's super important when you start building more flows um, and let's say flow label what do you want to call this one uh, patient data and if your name is descriptive in the flows itself definitely add description if you like but if your name are descriptive enough you can even skip the description and hit done so now why that's important is for example I want to now use a different element and see now I create a patient address I know what that patient address is I can pull it here and say country or something so see because I named it patient address I can use it later and I understand what that means so it's super important to name your variables another one is um, so that was for screen but let's say if you are creating a different variable so you can also and all the elements that you create or all the variables you will see under manager so elements is where you will see different so you can use all of these or few of those and any thing that you create will appear under manager which is where I have my patient data which is the screen it says and then screen component I have a patient address so if you click on that it will give you all the information about that where it is used created by so if you want to create another let's say resources are basically variable or anything that you are creating inside the flow more than likely you'll be creating a variable so I like to name it this way where if I'm creating an opportunity variable I will say opportunity if I'm creating an opportunity name variable I will say opportunity name 
data type. So if your variable is a record type, record type are more like, think of record type as the opportunity record itself. So I'll just remove the name from here because that doesn't make sense. So API name is where opportunity record type the record and then I'll say opportunity because that's what I'm creating. Available for input is if you are calling this from somewhere else and you want to pass that opportunity information. So I'm going to say available for input, maybe available for up. I don't need this one. Hit done. So again, this is a very small thing, naming convention. But since I named it var opportunity, the way I look at it, I know it's var opportunity. I don't have to click on it and figure out what this record does. So as you start building flows, be very mindful and conscious of what you're building. You're going to be not only doing yourself a favor, but you're also doing a favor for somebody else who takes over your flows and is trying to understand what is being done in this flow. Because you want to make sure it's readable for other people as well. So just a quick tip there. And once you're done creating the flow, you want to also name it properly in terms of your flow label. So I like, I like to use the name, object name first, and then what are you doing in that flow? So if it's, and Salesforce actually put them all as auto-launched flow, all the background flows, it will put them as auto-launched, and all the screen flow as screen flows. So with screen flow, you can just name them what it is. So I built a clone or create opportunity. You can name, name it as such, give a nice description, maybe a date if you need to. So you can add a description. This is used on opportunity page to create or clone opportunity, something like that. So it will be very helpful in the long run for your org. And if it's an auto-launched flow, usually I like to say, something like object name and then you can say whether it's after or before insert and basically now if I look at app, app account after insert I know this record this is a flow on account object which is firing after account is inserted so that is very easy for me to understand uh, if I named it something else something completely different it wouldn't make sense the reason for this is because you cannot go to account object and figure out what automations are being used on account object, right? Because, so if I want to go to, just to show you, or drive the point home, if I go to account and try to say, okay, what are the automations on account? I can't tell um, looking at the account object. And the naming convention is so important in flows is because if you are building a workflow, you can go to the workflow and you can say filter by object name equal to account. In flows, you can't do that. So if I go to filter here and try to add a filter, there is no filter on the name of the object. I've got trigger. Let's see what that is. So it's after save, before save. There is other types. So there's a flow label. You can filter it on name, which is, I don't know if that's very helpful. Um, so there's no really a good way to say, okay, give me all the account flows here. So, which is why the naming convention is so important. You can just filter, you know, sort it out of that uh, opportunity flow or account flow. So again, super important to have that naming convention going on, you know, or especially if you're getting started with flows now. Okay. I think I, that's, that's my rant on <laughs> best practices naming convention. Um, so we talked about when to use a flow and when to not use a flow also. So there's no need to go overboard with the flow because it's new and you just learned about it. Uh, definitely check out what else can you do without using the flow. Uh, I'll give you an example here. So on opportunities, my users needed a, a button on the opportunity so that they can edit a case or edit a contact directly from opportunity. And obviously they are uh, they are related in my org so you can build a flow for that so maybe they need a new case and they need a way to say this fields and save it it creates a new case 
well you can use flow for this but you can also try to see if it's possible using quick action because quick actions are also really powerful they let you create related records and you can add any fields you like you can default the values so quick action is a good example there instead of using a flow and there are other lightning components within the page that you also could use um, instead of flows if needed instead of for screen flows so that's a very tiny uh, difference when to not use a flow okay for automations i highly recommend going the flow first so anytime you get an automation requirement see if a flow does the work for you if for some reason flows are not enough then you want to go for triggers or uh, process or workflows I will link you to the learning resources. Um, Trailhead is a great place to start, but I also encourage you to just build your own flows. Uh, if you don't have a requirement, build a use case, um, take a simple example, and just build a very simple use case on a flow in your own developer edition org. You don't have to build it in your sandbox, but definitely try to get used to it. It's, it's a matter of starting to get used to the flow builder itself. And uh, as you build more and more, you'll get super comfortable. So good luck. Uh, I hope this was helpful. It was a little bit long than my other videos, um, but I really wanted to kind of chat about flows and uh, hope you find this helpful. Uh, definitely check out the other videos if you like. And hit that like button if you like this video and if you, if you think this was helpful for you.